drug smuggler, hitman, cartel chief, and social media influencer. This is the life of Zicario Chino Antrax. Jose Rodrigo Arachiga Gamboa, later known by the alias Chino Antrax, was born on June 15, 1980, to a well-respected family in Culiacan, which is the capital of the state of Sinaloa in Mexico. The state of Sinaloa was for years a hotbed of drug activity and narco-trafficking, so despite being born into an upper-middle-class family, young Jose was introduced to drug trafficking at a young age. His family, by all accounts, was better off than most in Mexico. Arachiga Gamboa's father held several positions in the Sinaloa government, including commissioner of communal lands, treasurer of state highways, and as a congressional representative. His mother and all his siblings hold advanced degrees. It would be a neighbor of Arachiga Gamboa that would lead young Jose down a path of drugs and violence. Living next door was the family of the mysterious mob boss of the Sinaloa cartel, Ismael El Mayo Zambada. Early in life, young Jose would befriend the sons of Ismael El Mayo Zambada. Their names were Vincente Zambada Nieble, Ismael Zambada Imperial, and Serafin Zambada Ortiz. Jose and the three brothers were all close in age, and over time, Arachiga Gamboa would begin to idolize the narco family and their lifestyles. As Omayo's sons grew older, they would become more involved in the family business, which happened to be narcotics trafficking. Young Jose would become enamored with the opulence of the Zambada's lifestyle and admired them greatly. Despite his admiration, Jose Arachiga Gamboa would attempt to follow in the footsteps of his parents and siblings by attending college, joining the military, and eventually becoming part of Mexico's professional class. Despite his admiration for the Zambadas, Arachiga Gamboa would make an attempt at a legitimate life. He would first attempt to become a pilot in the Mexican military, but failed the physical due to psoriasis. He would then attend school to become an architect, but before he could graduate, his life would take an unexpected turn. Arachiga Gamboa's girlfriend would become pregnant and the couple would have a daughter and marry shortly after. With a family to support, Arachiga Gamboa would be forced to drop out of school and would then turn to his friends, the Zambada brothers, for help. Vincente Zambada would help his friend the only way he knew how, and that was to bring Arachiga Gamboa into the cartel. Arachiga Gamboa would start out small driving shipments and supervising storage facilities. He would eventually make a name for himself by creating a drug smuggling system that involved starting U.S. companies that required shipments from Mexico and then using multiple cartel trucking companies to ship these goods to the U.S. Due to this, the trucks would have the proper paperwork when crossing the border to make deliveries to the cartel's companies in the U.S. Among the goods being shipped were loads of illegal drugs. This success would catch the eye of Vincente's father, El Mayo Zambada, and make Arachiga Gamboa a major player in the cartel. It was also during this time that Arachiga Gamboa would begin to engage in the more violent side of the narcotics business. He began working for the Sinaloa cartel as a bodyguard of Vincente Zambada Niebla. He would volunteer to engage in a number of early hits that were probably not required on his part due to his already high standing in the cartel and his proximity to the Zambadas. During this time, Arachiga Gamboa would become a top hitman. Following the separation of the Sinaloa cartel and the Beltran Leva cartel in 2008, the Sinaloa would create an armed squadron of their cartel whose duties included war with other cartels and providing armed security services to El Mayo Zambada and his family. Arachiga Gamboa would take the name Chino Antrax and under the direction of cartel security chief Alfredo Vizcata Vega would form this armed wing of the cartel. This squad of bodyguards and sicarios became known as Los Antrax. Early members of Los Antrax included Rene Velasquez Valenzuela who was also known as Sergeant Phoenix Antrax and Jesus Peña also known as L-20. 
These three men would lead Los Santarac Sicarios and would answer directly to Alfredo Vizcarra Vega. The new armed division of the Sinaloa cartel helped wage war against the newly formed Beltran Leyva cartel. The Beltran Leyva cartel was founded and named after brothers Arturo, Alfredo, Alberto, Carlos, and Hector Beltran Leyva after they separated from the Sinaloa cartel. Originally, Arturo Beltran Leyva and his four brothers worked as underbosses and security chiefs for the Sinaloa cartel. The breakaway from the Sinaloa cartel was motivated by the capture of Alfredo Beltran Leyva, El Mochimo, or the Desert Ant, by the Mexican military on January 1, 2008, which the brothers attributed to a betrayal by their boss, El Chapo Joaquin Guzman. After this incident, the Beltran Leyva brothers and their lieutenants defected from the Sinaloa cartel and allied themselves with the Gulf cartel and Los Zetas. On February 25, 2008, a group of gunmen led by Top Lieutenant Rene Velasquez Valenzuela became involved in a shootout with the Mexican army in Culiacan. After attempting to escape the scene, Velasquez was arrested along with other Los Antrax members. It was later revealed that Velasquez had opened fire on the army unit in an effort to distract them and allow El Chino Antrax to escape the scene. After the death of Alfredo Vescara Vega, a.k.a. El Feo Antrax, on November 4, 2008, Chino Antrax would assume control of the Los Antrax group and its stable of sicarios. Los Antrax sicarios led by Chino Antrax carried out hundreds of murders in just a few years during the campaign against the Beltran Leva cartel. Soon the Mexican military would get involved and there would be casualties on all sides. Then on July 1, 2010, a fierce gun battle erupted between the Sinaloa cartel with the backing of Los Antrax and the Beltran Leva cartel with the backing of Los Zetas that left about 30 dead in the town of Tubutama, Sonora in northern Mexico. The drug gangs clashed just a few miles across the international border with the U.S. state of Arizona, an area notorious for being a smuggling route for narcotics and human trafficking. Eleven late-model bullet-ridden vehicles were found at the scene, along with dozens of high-caliber assault rifles. Some of the vehicles had X painted on their windows, a method often used by the Mexican drug trafficking organizations to distinguish the vehicles of rival drug cartels during armed confrontations. Los Antrax gained public attention on May 26, 2011, when a squadron of the Mexican army that was patrolling a neighborhood in southern Culiacan spotted three vehicles with armed assailants. The encounter prompted a gunfight during which the Mexican forces managed to neutralize three members of Los Antrax and also liberated three kidnapping victims from a safe house in the area. Although the preliminary reports indicated that the three gunmen killed by the army Jesus Humberto Corona Guillen, Franklin Oguien Velasquez, and Pedro Valenzuela Mesa had died from gunshot wounds during the shootout. The post-mortem reports indicated that the gunmen had been beaten and tortured by the soldiers before being killed, even though the official account of the event was that they died in gun battle. With his profile on the rise within the cartel, El Chino Antrax started to share his life online through various social media accounts. He soon became the face of a younger generation of Mexican drug traffickers who enjoyed displaying their luxurious lifestyles of wealth and power online using social media. He often uploaded pictures of his sports cars, weapons, jewelry, money, yachts, and extravagant parties he would hold with famous narco corrido bands. These bands who were in attendance would often write songs and sing of his exploits. Chino Anthrax had several narco corrido ballads about him, some of which describe him as an elegant and fit man who enjoys his luxuries. Chino Anthrax would use a variety of online aliases including El Comodante Anthrax, Scarface Renacido, El Oriental, R57, and El Quinto Elemento, among others. On Facebook and Twitter accounts, he used Comadante57, and on Instagram, he was known by the username MIAUUU5 underscore 7 and James Bond 5 underscore 7. On these social media accounts, he would often raffle off a variety of items to his followers, including cell phones, expensive cars, sunglasses, and other gifts. In an attempt to show off his muscular physique, he would frequently appear on his Instagram feed 
sporting protein intakes, and sharing his workout routines. He also uploaded pictures of his many trips abroad, including holidays in Europe, Japan, the Middle East, Las Vegas, and parts of Africa. In one image, he appears alongside well-known socialite Paris Hilton, and in others, he can be seen sitting next to Ismael Zambada Imperial, son of cartel boss Elmayo Zambada. Despite his prolific use of social media, Chino Antrax always blurred his face in the pictures he uploaded. However, in most of them, he could be seen wearing the skull-shaped diamond ring given to members of the hit squad he led. Along with online fame, Chino Antrax would also become an urban legend on the streets of Mexico for a very different reason. He would often make public threats and displays in order to strike fear into his enemies. After a murder, he and his men would often hang the body in a public place with a threatening banner explaining the reason for the murder or perhaps a threat to other cartels or the public. These messages were called narcomantas. There were even rumors that those who died by Arachiga Gamboa's hand would continue to suffer in the afterlife because of these displays. These urban legends, coupled with his murderous exploits, would cement Arachiga Gamboa's reputation as one of the most feared members of the cartel. By 2009, the Sinaloa cartel was at war on multiple fronts. While still at war with the Beltran Leva brothers, the Sinaloa cartel began to encroach on the territory of the Juarez cartel. During his tenure as leader of Los Antrax, Chino Antrax was responsible for thousands of murders, from cartel gunmen to innocents caught in the crossfire. By 2011, the conflict seemed all but over with the Juarez cartel. However, a resurrection was about to take place. By September 2011, the extinct Juarez cartel announced its return through narcomantas that were displayed throughout Chihuahua. La Línea, the armed wing of the Juarez cartel made up of current and former Chihuahua state police officers and hitmen, continued the battle for control of the city against the Sinaloa cartel. Los Antrax were involved in numerous conflicts with rival drug gangs and as a result suffered many casualties. On October 31, 2011, a ranking member of Los Antrax, Francisco Arce Rubio, also known as L4, was shot to death by gunmen of the Beltran Leva cartel. Assassins would open fire on L4, killing the Antrax leader with AK-47 machine guns during a soccer match. Further deaths occurred the following year when in February of 2012 an armed confrontation between two groups of gunmen resulted in the death of five men, one of whom was identified as Roque Antrax, a member of the Antrax group of Sicarios that worked under Mayo Zambara and Chino Antrax. The group suffered further setbacks when several members of Los Antrax, including Jose Miguel Montoya, also known as El Monkey, and Rafael Guadalupe Felix Nunez, also known as El Changuito Antrax, were arrested on April 16, 2013 by municipal police during a raid in South Culiacan. These losses weakened Los Antrax substantially, and it is believed that Chino Antrax's leadership of Los Antrax during this time looked shaky in the eyes of cartel leaders due to both losses in the field and his flashy online lifestyle. Toward the end of 2013, the former mob boss of the Tijuana cartel, Francisco Rafael Eriano Felix, was shot and killed in Los Cabos, Mexico. In a video taken at the party, the assassin wore a clown mask to disguise himself before the shooting. While there are many suspects, one of the main suspects just happened to be Chino Antrax. In January 2014, the Mexican Attorney General's office stated that the alleged mastermind of the murder was possibly Jose Rodrigo Arachiga Gamboa, leader of Los Antrax. The agency revealed through several photographs that Francisco Rafael and Arachiga Gamboa met at a fight promotion in Los Cabos two days prior to the murder. The Attorney General's office then hypothesized that the murder had stemmed from Francisco Rafael's involvement in money laundering activities and as a message from Los Antrax to show that they were in charge of organized crime in Los Cabos. The state authorities identified two other possible suspects, Noé Castro, also known as R1 and Arachiga Gamboa's right-hand man in Los Cabos, and a man only known by his alias, R13. The Attorney General's office also conducted anthropometry studies to conclude if Arachiga Gamboa fit the physical description 
of the assassin featured in the video with the clown mask. With the heat turned up, it was no surprise when on January 3, 2014, it was announced that the Netherlands Ministry of Security and Justice, in cooperation with the Mexican Embassy, had arrested a 33-year-old Mexican citizen as he arrived from Latin America to the Amsterdam airport. The man entered the country under a false name on December 30, 2013, and although his identity was not revealed by Dutch authorities, an anonymous U.S. federal agent and local Mexican newspapers leaked to the media that the man was in fact Jose Rodrigo Arachiga Gamboa, one of the founders and leaders of Los Antrax and Plaza Chief of Culiacan. His capture was confirmed by the U.S. government who alleged that Arachiga Gamboa had traveled under the assumed name of Norberto Sicarios Garcia at the time of his arrest and had in his possession three airplane tickets, an iPhone 5, a BlackBerry Bold, credit cards from Visa, MasterCard, and Banamex, along with a Mexican driver's license. At the time of his arrest, he was wearing the silver skull ring seen on social media, signifying his membership in Los Antrax. He was sent to the Futh Maximum Security Prison and later appeared before a judge on January 2nd, where it was confirmed that he had been apprehended at the request of the U.S. government, who had contacted Interpol for assistance in tracking and arresting Arachiga Gamboa. He was wanted on charges relating to trafficking huge quantities of drugs in the United States from across the border in Mexico. Extradition proceedings were initiated to bring the suspect to trial in the United States, where he would be sanctioned under the Kingpin Act. Unknown to his former associates, Chino Antrax began cooperating with investigators around this time. Chino Antrax would go on to reveal insider information on the inner workings of the Zambada faction of the cartel. Jose Rodrigo Arachiga Gamboa pled guilty on March 20, 2015 to participating in transporting cocaine and marijuana shipments from Mexico to the United States, as well as facilitating violent activities on behalf of the Sinaloa cartel. Arachiga Gamboa would cooperate in a number of cases, including that of Serafin Zambada Ortiz, who was the son of El Mayo Zambada. After spending six years in custody in the United States, Chino Antrax was sentenced to seven years and three months in U.S. federal prison. This lenient sentence would have been greater, however, he was known to have fully cooperated with American investigators and received this sentence in accordance with his help in the apprehension of other cartel members. On March 3, 2020, Chino Antrax was released. Some two months later, on May 9th, his probation officer reported him missing. On the night of May 15th at 11 p.m., the blast from automatic weapons rocked the neighborhood of Guadalupe, Victoria, scaring residents into staying inside their homes. After an intense gun battle which lasted throughout the night, three people, a woman and two men, were bundled into a waiting vehicle by armed gunmen. Several minutes later, the municipal police finally arrived on the scene and surveyed the damaged front door with dozens of bullet holes from heavy weaponry of the unknown gunman. What the police later learned was that the gunfight had been the result of a Sinaloa hit squad that arrived and was repelled by Chino Antrax and those inside the property. When he ran out of ammunition, he and the others were taken hostage by the gunman. The following day, police in the town of Ayun, Sinaloa, came across a black SUV containing the bodies of three people. These were identified as 39-year-old Jose Rodrigo Arachiga Gamboa, his sister, Ida Jimena Arachiga, and his brother-in-law, Juan Garcia. All three had been shot and their bodies were wrapped in cloth with black plastic bags over their heads. It is strongly believed the murder of Chino Antrax was not the result of retaliation from a rival gang, but had been ordered by the leadership of the Sinaloa cartel because of his cooperation with law enforcement. Jose Rodrigo Arachiga Gamboa, also known as Chino Antrax, will be forever remembered not only as one of the most prolific hitmen in the history of organized crime, but also the first assassin to use social media to become an influencer. It is unknown how many murders he had a hand in over the course of his career, but some estimates reach into the thousands. These numbers alone make him one of the deadliest sicarios of the Mexican drug war.